next one, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So if you want to sing along and you have your hymn book with you, it's number 590. Some great hymns there. So we come and acknowledging the presence of God. We open the Bible, the word of God made flesh through the life of Christ. And we light the candle, the light shining in the darkness. And so if you happen to have those things at home and you're opening um, the, your Bible and your candle, that's great as we join together. So as we join together, we also know that we gather from different places. But as we gather, we recognise that this land is God's land and God's spirit dwells here. We acknowledge the people of the Kulin Nation, traditional custodians of this land under God. We commit ourselves again to working for reconciliation in this land. And so welcome. As I said before, welcome to worship this morning. And this morning we're back into our biblical heroes, our last two before we begin the journey towards Advent. And we're going to be hearing about Jesus this morning. And Lois Bates is going to be sharing with that as well as our Billy and May story and some special fun with that. Um, so that's where we're heading to. Um, and then next week will be our last biblical hero. And then we have the Christ the King and heading into Advent, that time of preparation. 
and other things will be happening during that December time as too, and we'll be talking about that later. But as we normally do, as we begin the service, let's take a moment and let me say to you, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. So take a moment, um, text someone, share that peace with those of you that may be in the same house as you. Um, if you can't actually talk to someone, imagine those people that you would like to share that peace with. And let's take a moment and do that. Wonderful. Let, let me lead us in our call to worship. O oh, come, let us worship and lift our hearts. Not because the world is good and last week was awesome, but because the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the God of the whole earth. O oh, come, let us worship and raise our hands. Not because our lives are all sweetness and light, but because even those who walk in the darkness can see a great light, the bright morning star. O come, let us worship and bow down, not because God gives us what we want, but because God gives us what we need, the holy child Jesus, God's unspeakable gift. So you're going to notice that we've got this theme of Christ of Jesus today, and, and that's going to go through everything we do. So we're going to start by singing in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter. All in all, here in the love of Christ, I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came. Say till on that cross, as Jesus died, the love of God was magnified. For every sin on Him was laid. Here in the death of Christ, I live. Oh, 
a great song indeed. Let us come now to God with our prayers of adoration and confession. Let us pray. We come before you, loving God, and thank you that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you that your goodness and grace towards us is unchanging and unchangeable. We give grateful thanks that you want to be in relationship with us and so sent your son to show us just what that relationship could look like. But, Lord, we have lived far too long in dark places of our own making. We have walled ourselves in, shut the world out, and held ourselves captive to our fear and failings. Free us from this place, Lord. Return us to a life in your presence where we may face the trials of this world with you by our side. Restore your light to our eyes that we may behold anew your love in our lives. Hear us and help us, we pray. We wait in eager anticipation for the glory of your salvation. Amen. Amen. So rejoice and be glad. Your burdens are lifted. Your captivity is ended. The Lord's great light pierces the darkness, breaching the walls of our prisons, revealing the way of true freedom. Light, love and salvation have come to us. Christ was born and with Christ we are born anew. And what can we say to that but? Thanks be to God. Amen. So our readings this morning come from both Old Testament and New Testament, and Kel's going to do that for us. So our first reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, then we jump through to 6 and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And then our second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 6 to 8. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Zach, over to you. Thank you, Jay, and thank you, Kelly, as usual, for that uh, Bible reading. Um, there really isn't much to say other than to uh, address a, a question that's come up a few times around why we're doing Jesus in our Bible hero story before we're doing Mary. More will be revealed during Advent, but we're looking at important births, but through the eyes of the mother. So we wanted to end our Bible hero series looking at Mary next week, hearing what it might have been like for her and her journey and her experience of, of being a mother and birthing Christ and then everything that came with that, which is then leading into Advent. So that's why we've got the order round the other way but not much needs to be said because, again, Pam has produced another excellent story that connects our, our families with our, our Bible readings and with the message from Jay and, and Lois today. And so I just want to give thanks to her. Uh, I'd like to thank Doug, who is the narrator for today, and he's brought his own creativity to it, which I'm looking forward to seeing again. And also giving thanks to Erin to for her beautiful drawings that really transport us into the story in particular You'll see she's drawn a bauble and when 
Pam wrote it. That's just the picture that came to my mind. So it's wonderful that with, with words and pictures, we can bring this story of Jesus that we know so well, more to life and, and more to us today. And thank you also to Roger for editing the video and working behind the scenes on this story and, and all the other stories and, and the other things that we produce for church each week. It's greatly appreciated. So enough from me. Jay, let's see the video, please. Hello, my name's Doug. I've got a few things here to show you. I wonder what they are. Yes, they're Christmas decorations, aren't they? I wonder who our story is about today. I wonder who our hero is. Let's read the story and find out. May has a super special Christmas decoration that she wants to show Billy if she's allowed. It's a precious bauble which hangs at the top of her family's Christmas tree. When it's not on the tree, it lies wrapped in soft tissue paper in a safe place with all the other Christmas decorations. Yes, you can show it to Billy, said May's mum, if you promise to be careful and sit down while you're doing it. When May placed it in Billy's hands, she said to him, there's something mysterious about this decoration, Billy. It's belonged to my family for many generations, and it was made by an old woman who lived in India. She told my great-great-grandparents who bought it from her that it has a mysterious power. Billy could see splashes of colour all over, and as he held it in his hands, something wonderful happened. Lights flashed on and off and the colours became shapes. Billy carefully, slowly turned the bauble around. The old woman who made it told my great-great-grandparents that it tells the story of Jesus. She said Jesus was her hero and she lived every day for him even though she was very, very poor and often sick. Although her face was old and wrinkled, it shone with peace and kindness, May told Billy. As Billy held the bauble, the warmth of his hands brought it to life. He and May gazed in wonder. Each time I turn the bauble, I can see different pictures, Billy exclaimed. Look, there's a baby lying in a box of hay. I can see a cross made of red rubies, explained May. Billy turned it again. A boy is asking lots of questions and teachers are looking amazed at how much he knows. And as they kept turning the bauble, you could hear them sharing. Crowds of people are following Jesus everywhere. Look, some have to be carried and others can't see. And when he touches them, they're healed. But there's angry people there too. No, oh, a cross and drops of blood, whispered Billy. People are shouting, some are crying. There's a body in a cave and a big stone. And now the cave is empty and the people look frightened and puzzled. But Jesus is not dead, he's come back to life. And look, said May, his followers understand. And they now they know that he is God's own son. As they returned the bauble to its box, May turned to Billy and said, Jesus is the greatest hero. He was born to Mary and Joseph. And as a little boy, he was a refugee. And as an adult, he was homeless. Growing up, he learned to walk, work with Joseph, but he had one purpose in life, and that was to teach the truth about God's love for the world and to teach us to live God's way. He chose 12 men to be his disciples, and people soon heard of his power to heal, and crowds followed him. 
Some believed he spoke God's words to them, but others refused to believe. Jesus always helps those who ask him. Everywhere he went, he told stories which were called parables. The one like I told you, Billy, about the vineyard owner. May continued, when Jesus told the truth about God, people felt loved and accepted. People believed Jesus, and sadly that made the leaders angry. They made up lies so he would be accused of being a criminal and they could be rid of him. He could have saved himself, but instead he accepted God's plan to save the world. This meant he suffered and died on a cross. But we know he didn't stay dead, chimed in Billy. God made him alive and he lives forever. Mum says he can live in my heart. You're so right, Billy. Jesus wants to live in everyone's heart, whether you're very old or young like us, May replied. Like the old woman who made that special bauble, Jesus lived in her heart and was her hero for sure. My dad says we all need Jesus in our heart to help us live God's way. Well, did you guess who the hero was? Where do you read stories and hear the stories about Jesus? Thank you to Doug. Great reading and again, great story. We hope our families uh, are well and got something out of that. If usual, if there's anything we can do, reach out and, and let us know. And uh, we look forward to the final week of, of the Bible Heroes story of Billy and May next week, which is read to us by David. And we're actually going to have a special guest appearance in that story that um, we're looking forward to seeing a face that I'm sure many of us will not have seen in quite a while. So I don't know, you know what it will be like now that Billy and May will be over next week. I think it's become a, a staple of, of our services and, and our church practice. So I wonder where we'll be going next. But I think it's been great that we've been able to have that and, and watch them them grow and journey with them over the past few weeks as, as we've looked at our different faith heroes. So here's to next week. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Zach. That's great. Let me stop our sharing just for the moment and let me talk to you. So Jesus and me. Um, when we consider the title that I've given us today, that title of Jesus and me, it's a story. It's a relationship. It's a connection that can become very personal. All of us have our own relationship with Christ. And Jesus has walked through a range of different places and times with us, surrounding us with love, empowering us with the Holy Spirit, encouraging us with the knowledge that nothing can separate us from God. The readings I've chosen for today give us insights into the character and the importance of Jesus. We start with a reading or we started with a reading that we would normally hear in the time leading up to Christmas. The promise of a child who will establish and uphold the kingdom with justice and righteousness. The prophet Isaiah tells us just who this child will be and how important he will be for the people, as well as the endless peace that will come. Now, we may not see the endless peace around us and in the world today, but remember this is coming. It is the light that will shine in the darkness. Our second reading is a statement of faith, just as Lois's story that we will hear today is. It assures us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Just as Isaiah speak, as Isaiah's reading speaks of what is to come from this time onward and forevermore. Today, we get to hear a very personal story from Lois about her hero, Jesus. Please listen carefully. And if you want the transcript of this, just ask, because I have it. This story, this testimony, is a challenge to us all. It challenges us to look carefully at the way we live and how strong our trust in God is. 
it's an amazing statement of faith and love. And I really don't need to say very much more than just that. So let's take a moment to share um, Lois's story. Jesus, my biblical hero, and why? When I was young, my mom related many stories, and among them were biblical stories, including baby Jesus. I lived in a multicultural, multilingual, multireligious country, Sri Lanka. The Christian population is in the minority. I went to Christian schools, but majority of students were from all religions, languages, and cultures. I learned about Jesus among other subjects at school, home, church, and Sunday school. I loved Jesus' story because he was healing people, relating stories, preaching, doing miracles, forgiving sins, raising the dead. You can read them in Luke chapters four onwards to the end. As I grew up, I joined Bible study classes. I came to know that Jesus was conceived by Virgin Mary through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is said the Holy Spirit came upon her. You may read it in Luke chapter 1, verse 30 to 39, KJV. There was no physical union then, and until the child was born to Mary and Joseph, she did not have any physical union. Read Matthew 1, 24 to 25, GNB. Why? Because the conception had to be holy, meaning sacred, without sin. Jesus was both human as well as divine, born of a human mother, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, no doubt in my mind, he is the Son of God. I truly believe this, and we say this in the creed. These days, doctors do implantation into women's wombs to have a child. Why can't God, who created every living thing, create in Mary, Mary's virgin womb? He surely can. When Jesus was baptized and he came out of the water, the Holy Spirit, as a dove, came and rested on his shoulder. And the voice from heaven came saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Mark 1, 9 to 11, KJV. From this, I understood that the word God is three in one. The Trinity, which is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I am that I am. In the present tense, ever present. How do I know? In Genesis 1, 26 KJV, God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. I am convinced Jesus was present then and later on willingly came down to earth according to his father's will for the redemption and reconciliation of the whole world because sin entered the world. After Jesus was baptized, 
and he was in the wilderness fasting and praying for 40 days and 40 nights. The evil one came to tempt him when he was weary and hungry. But he did not give in. He tackled temptations head on. He did not fight, did not antagonize, but answered wisely and the evil one fled. He did not succumb to temptation. Matthew 4, 1 to 11 KJV. From this, I learned not to give in, not to run away, but to overcome temptation by handling the situation wisely with wisdom God gives to me. I learned to pray also. I never allow myself to become weak physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Temptations come to us when we are weak and vulnerable. Daily prayer makes me strong to face the circumstances I may find myself in as I journey along life's way. When Jesus needed strength, he prayed. I have found it. It is wonderful to know Jesus. When Jesus sent out his disciples into the world, he said, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doubts. KJB Matthew 10, 16. I loved those words in my life. I adopted it. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 KJB, it is stated, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I learned to take all my heartaches, tears, worries, anxious fears, and burdens in prayer to Jesus. So began a life of regular daily prayer and a relationship with Jesus built on trust or faith. This became a time of thanksgiving, worship, and communication. Prayer in faith is the communication line to God and ask in the name of Jesus. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. We get to know God through Jesus' life story here on earth. When Jesus was asleep in the boat while sailing, the disciples woke him up because of a fierce storm. And he stilled the storm. He asked, where is your faith? There was calm. Luke 8, 22 to 25 KJV. Once again, Jesus overcame a turbulent circumstance. I learned with Jesus, we can overcome the storms of life when they happen. The fact that we are Christian we do not have a rosy path, but we become overcomers. He is a God who provides. Jesus fed 5,000 people. There are many more stories. He is a God who gives us life and light to shine in this dark world. John 1. 3 to 5 KJV. 
Jesus healed the woman who was discarded by society. He spoke to the Samaritan woman. Many, many more stories. I adore Jesus because he lifts up the fallen, discarded, downtrodden people of the society, welcomes the brokenhearted, the sick and suffering, tormented people. He loves and heals them. If I go to speak about Jesus, I can say a lot and time will not be enough. So I am shortening. The reason Jesus came down to earth, taking a human form, is to save the whole world from sin, to love us human beings, to care, to guide us, to redeem us as God's own children. No other religion has a God like this to care, to take upon himself the sin of the world, to suffer and die on the cross. When Jesus was on the cross, the thief on the right side rebuked the man on the other side because he was dishonoring Jesus even at that last hour. The thief on the right hand side took hold of the opportunity and repenting said, we deserve punishment, but he doesn't deserve. He said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus forgave him, understood him and said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. This shows Jesus' acceptance of all people when they repent, whatever their circumstances may be. He did not ask for his religion, race, caste or creed. He accepts everyone in the whole world. It is said in John 3.16 KJV, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, he was crucified, died, buried, and rose on the third day, defeating death and all manner of evil powers, breaking bondages that hold people captive, giving them new life, new strength, courage, love, peace, and hope. Read from Luke chapter 23, 1 to the end, and chapter 24, 1 to 12. Jesus is alive. He ascended into heaven before the eyes of disciples covered in clouds. Luke 24, 49 to 53 KJV. I have a hymn that I love and I will read it to you and it is in this together together in song book number 590. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. 
can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Jesus is our only refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. Today, I am a Christian, not because my parents took me to church or it is my family tradition. I found out for myself what is more important to me for this life's journey. My faith has grown and matured and still growing. No one wants our troubles but Jesus will take them. Jesus understands human beings at their level because he has been through all the sufferings that we human beings undergo. He is the only savior who can protect us from sin and evil. He stood for justice, forgiveness, love, and acceptance. He adds value to each one's life. We are all worthy. Jesus, my hero in life's journey, is my help, my life, my strength, my guide, my wisdom, my love, my joy, peace, and happiness. He paid the price to make us worthy. There is no one in the whole world like Jesus, my hero. Praise and thanks be to God. I'm going to leave it there because realistically, what could be a better ending to that story than that smile and praise and thanks be to God? Thank you, Lois. We're going to sing together. Blessed Assurance. This is my 
when we come together to offer back to God for all that we have been given. So as it has been our practice, if you have a little bowl where you pop your offering in, if you've been offering and, and giving money through direct debit, that is wonderful, uh, or through the envelopes that I get, um, just hold them all as we give back to God. Amazing God, we thank you for your son for all that Jesus is, that Jesus brings, that Jesus helps us to be. And in some small way to say thank you for that, we give back to you through money, for your work in the world, but most importantly, we give back to you through ourselves to be your people in this world. Bless us, we ask, and this money in your name. Amen. Amen. So on to notices and reminders. So as we said, next week is our last week and we are doing uh, with our biblical heroes and we're doing Mary, the mother of Jesus and Marg Edwards will be sharing with us. And um, this will be our last week before we begin to turn towards Advent. Just a reminder that the parents prayer gathering uh, is happening um, on the 10th of November. If you need any more details or any more information about that, please contact Zach and he will give you all that you need. Reminding that our Spoonville is still there. So if people want to add to that, they can do just that spot on the corner there. Um, that would be, that's where we are. So if you want to add your little spoon to that, that would be wonderful. Reminder that our store, children's stories have been also posted on our YouTube channel and there are links in the pew sheet for that um, and uh, more will be added as they are done. To let you know that the celebration of the life of Blair Campbell, so Blair um, passed away this week, will take place at the church on Monday tomorrow at 10.30. Unfortunately, due to the restrictions, only the family can attend but the service will be live streamed. I've sent out that live stream link on the, um, the email list. If you haven't received that and would like it, please let me know and I can pass that on to you. A couple of other little notices that I forgot to put in the, the pew sheet is that submissions for um, the muck mag are coming up for next weekend. So if you've got something, you need to get that into Roger next weekend, please. And I believe that the men are meeting for breakfast next Saturday morning. Again, if you have a conversation with Roger, of course, there will be limits and um, you need to be well and healthy to do so. Um, but the slowly our groups are, becoming, are coming back together again. And that reminds me to say that any of our groups that wish to meet, you please need to let church council know first just so that we can make sure that all of the requirements that are required, requirements that are required, all the things that need to be met for COVID are done. And I believe I've seen a little news flash that Dan Andrews is announcing that the 25K limit has been withdrawn. Um, and there are a few other things. So I'm sure we'll catch up on all of that a little bit later. Uh, reminder that we will gather after worship this morning for uh, morning tea. So please, those who can join us, do so. As we come to a moment now when we think about our prayer points, I'd encourage you if you've got any prayer points to write them in the chat for Church Online or Facebook and Kel and Zach will join in with us as we do that. Um, but just walk, one, running through our prayer points and um, they seem to be getting longer just at the moment, but uh, we say happy birthday to all our November birthday people. Um, in the pew sheet, you will have seen the church council and elders prayer points, so we continue with those. We pray for the friends and family of Blair Campbell as they mourn her, mourn him. 
And uh, just to let you know that I received an email last, or a text message last night that Ian Sinkop passed away yesterday. So um, the funeral for Ian will take place in the next week or so. So we, we um, keep his family in our prayers as well. Lois, we keep in our prayers. Mark Reed, Kath Hughes, Reg Bright, Shaz Sturk, um, and Don. Uh, Belinda, Belinda has has um, is not going forward to uh, to be a candidate for the Ministry of the Word, um, but she has said to me she has uh, really, really appreciated the prayers and support that we have surrounded her with. So that's been really good. And she's looking forward and, and still sitting and discerning just where it is that God is calling her because he's definitely calling her, <laughs> that to be sure. Um, we've got Bruce down there. And um, just to let you know that Bruce has been diagnosed with bowel cancer. It's really, really early. It looks really, really good. The prognosis is great. He will um, have an operation on the 20th. Um, so just to keep him and me and the family in your prayers would be great as well. Uh, little Ellie Kwong has broken her elbow. So we keep her in our prayers. And Erin is recovering from very minor surgery as well. So all of these people we keep in our prayers. For our wider connections, um, for those who have lost their employment or for who their employment is not certain. And I think I'd like to add into that the American people um, as a, um, a president-elect has been announced and whatever may happen now. <laughs> and um, we keep that nation in our prayers. Um, the assembly has asked us to join in prayer for those who um, champion social justice, um, for the victims of the terrorist attack in Nice, France, for our sister churches around the world. And then the Presbytery has asked us to pray for the Willis Hill congregation, uh, for the Minister Charles Buckter and members of the congregation as they stay connected using online media. Um, Kel or Zach, do we have any extras to add? Um, yeah, so we have a prayer point from Shaz um, calling that we just pray for unity across the world and that people choose kindness in all that they do. And also another one, which I'm deciphering is a celebration point from Doug that says, we are one tomorrow. What a wonderful year. So I presume that's a wedding anniversary. It will be. That is a celebration point, definitely. How exciting. Yeah. Absolutely. Zach, go for it. Uh, Tay has asked for prayers for everyone and saying that she sends her love to us all. Wonderful. Let us pray. Amazing God, as we have sat and spoken and shared these things, you have sat amongst it all. So you have heard all that we bring to you today from the bottom of our hearts. And we know that you will be with all who need it, that you will make your presence around the world felt. And for that, Lord, we are amazingly thankful. So let us at this time, Join our voices with the voices of your people around the world as we say the prayer that you gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So as we go from this time of worship, let me say to you blessings. Blessed are you who bear the light in unbearable times, who testify to its endurance amid the unendurable, who bear witness to its persistence when everything seems in shadow and grief. Blessed are you in whom the light lives, in whom the br brightness blazes your heart, a chapel and altar where the deepest night can be seen, a fire that shines forth in you in unaccountable faith, in stubborn hope, 
in love that illuminates every broken thing it finds. Blessings to you all from Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together Life to the Brim. Life to the brim, life overflowing, life pouring out in compassion and grace. Spirit of God, well up within us, bring us to life in this time and this place. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, make us your people. So we go from this place into whatever the week has before us. Um, and Alison has given us amazing grace as the piece of music to go out to. So if you want, again, sing along together in song 129. <laughs> 